Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are taking a look at another interesting offering that's available to us now from Honeywell. And it is from a company that's underneath Honeywell. So Sia Burgess is the name of the company. They've been a part of Honeywell since, uh, let me just double check this, 2013. Um, and what they offer is PLC controls. So uh, mission critical normally used in industrial application controllers uh, that program a little bit differently than we're used to. And these give us a lot more flexibility about the applications that we can use controllers in. And we can still bring them back into Niagara using uh, OPC UA right now. And uh, Cyburgis and Honeywell are actually working on uh, bringing BACnet to this controller as well. So in this video, we're going to open up the box take a little bit of a look at the controller itself and uh, as we're doing that I'll just give you some more details about uh, PLC programming and uh, why this controller might be useful to you. So let's uh, move the camera down here a little bit and uh, take a look. Alright so here we have the Cyburgis Chronox PCD3 6893 PLC controller and the first thing that you'll notice uh, in looking at this controller is these four slots at the top. This is what you're going to use for your I.O. modules. They're going to pop in here if I hold that clip down here at the top. Those will just slip in and then you get the ability to mix and match as you need with your analog inputs, outputs, digital inputs and outputs. Um, and they have the typical variants that you would expect to see, as well as options that have handoff autos, if that's the kind of thing that you need. And then uh, we look at the rest of the hardware. We've got a port here down here at the bottom. This lets us take additional housings for our I.O. and strap them on the side of the controller itself. We can do quite a few of these, something like up to a thousand points of I.O. could come back into this single controller, which is super handy. They also have the ability to use um, IP-based housings to bring the uh, data back into the controller itself. That is key if you want to do actual redundancy, because when you're doing a redundant controller, uh, controllers or redundant system, you don't want your I.O. to be on uh, the device that you think could potentially fail, right? So you would have two of these controllers with no I.O. at all. All of your I.O. then would be moved out to an IP-based housing that has all of the I.O. that you're talking to from your controllers itself. Controllers themselves would determine who's the primary, secondary, uh, while they're talking directly to one another. And then if one fell out, they would be synced up. They would have the exact same status and... Uh, point values and things across the two of them, and you would probably not even notice that uh, the other one went down if that was the case. So that's uh, one of the really unique offerings as a part of using these controllers uh, and devices from the PLC world. Their industrial use cases, we're talking um, potentially life safety stuff in some cases, obviously it wouldn't be most likely for us, but... Um, much more powerful and resilient devices than we're typically used to seeing. Then down here at the bottom, we've got uh, another uh, I.O. terminal block that has a 485 port, a couple interrupt uh, inputs, which we can use to do some interesting things in our program, a watchdog input as well, and then our uh, power input. And then next to that, we've got... Uh, an Ethernet port. This is one of two Ethernet interfaces that the controller has. And uh, the other Ethernet interface is switched between these two ports. So uh, don't plug into uh, both of these ports expecting to get separate IP addresses or something like that on them. They are switched and they are going to go to the same network. And then we've got a USB port. This is going to be used on your initial setup. Uh, plug it into your computer and it's going to come across to your computer as if it was an Ethernet interface. So that makes it very handy to set up and use. And then we've got some additional terminal blocks here on the side. CAN bus at the very bottom, probably not something that you're going to be using if you're coming from the building automation world. And then we've got another uh, terminal block here, which is doing some stuff related to the slot here at the top. So that is the Chronox PCD3 um, 
controller from Cyburgis and Honeywell. Uh, I think it's something that's really interesting depending on the use cases and the kinds of jobs that you do. If you need true redundancy, this is kind of the, the go-to device, in my opinion, uh, for making that happen. Uh, we can bring it back into Niagara right now using OPC UA. That's built into the controllers. Very, very easy to set up, both on the, the controller side in PLC as well as on the Niagara side. Very easy to set up, um, almost BACnet-like, I would say. But BACnet is coming as well. Uh, Cybergis and Honeywell are working on that. And um, if you have any questions or comments about these controllers or PLCs in general, leave them down below in the comments. Uh, I was actually up in Minneapolis uh, about a month or so ago uh, getting training on these controllers, and there's a lot of power there. It's a little bit of a different paradigm than we're used to seeing in the building automation world, but I think depending on your use case, there's a lot of, there's a lot of value there for sure. So like I said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you're interested in potentially getting um, into this world or purchasing one of these controllers or learning more, you can head over to brodyprecision.com or store.brodyprecision.com to make any purchases or look at uh, any additional details on those things. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.